Naming and drawing uh, carboxylic acids in chemistry 30 is actually really, really simple because we're more concerned with being able to recognize the functional group in the carboxylic acid than name a whole bunch of complicated compounds. So the <clears throat> carboxylic acids you'll always have to deal with in this class will always have their carboxyl group at carbon one. Doesn't always happen with carboxylic acids, but it is a fairly high priority functional group. And as well, you would probably mostly be dealing with them where they weren't always carbon one if there was more than one carboxylic acid. So how would we draw ethanoic acid? Well, once again, eth means two carbons here. And of course, it's single bonded because we have an after it. So I'm going to start by writing out my two carbons. And then this is a propanoic, or this is a uh, carboxylic acid, which means it has to have a COOH group. So typically the way we represent this looks like this. And we actually draw angles on this, uh, unlike some other structural diagrams, because this is a very characteristic shape. You could draw the carboxylic acid group this way. It does happen from time to time, but most chemists, instead of just drawing it along a straight line, they'll actually put it at the prop or something approximating the proper trigonal planar angle. Okay, we've got our carboxylic acid group in there. We just need to add in some hydrogens. There's your ethanoic acid. We could condense this down as well. Write it like this. <clears throat> or we could do a line diagram as well. And the really important thing with the line diagram is sometimes people forget there's a carbon in here. So don't forget that. There is a carbon at that junction between those four bonds in the middle. So that is pretty simple for how to draw that. And if it's something bigger, like if it's propanoic acid, you're just adding another carbon on the end. If it's butanoic acid, there's another carbon. Pentanoic acid, there you go. So it's pretty straightforward to name and draw those compounds. Just look how long the parent chain is. Look if there's any branches, you know the carboxylic acid will be a carbon one. Little bit more complicated, let's take a look at oxalic acid, just as an example for practicing drawing. Now, oxalic acid doesn't use our naming conventions. It has its own specific name that we use when we're describing it. But the nice and convenient thing about oxalic acid is that it is actually in um, our acid base table. So if we take a look at the acid base table, we see that it has this formula. So it has two of these carboxylic acid motifs. So we would start off pretty much the same way. We'd have a carbon in the middle. And we know that both sides have the carboxylic acid motif on it. So it's pretty easy to draw as well. Now, it doesn't matter if you draw it this way or if you draw it this way. They're the same thing. That single bond around the two carbons right here is able to rotate freely. So probably the shape that the molecule would actually make would be this one because that would get the electronegativities as far apart as possible. If you were to draw it with a line diagram, it would look like this. And that is another good reminder that those points in the core of the carboxyl group have carbons in them. You would not have to draw this if we were to give it a systemic IUPAC name, though. 
we would call it ethan, because two carbons, single bonded, dioic acid. So you can see the same types of naming rules at play here. We have the di in front of the oic acid to indicate that there's two of them, and we don't need any numbers because there's only two carbons, and unlike the hydroxyl groups and the alcohols, you can't have one more, more than one carboxyl group on a carbon. Other big thing you need to be able to do is be able to actually recognize where the carboxylic acid groups are. A type of question that diplomas like is, can you recognize this functional group within a diagram? The carboxylic acid in this molecule is here. Don't get confused by this stuff. Because even though you do have uh, your double bonded oxygen, you do have an alcohol group, you have two carbons here, not one. You all, they both have to be bonded to the same carbon in order for it to form a carboxylic acid group. In this case, we would just have a double bonded oxygen and an alcohol. We don't actually have a full-on carboxylic acid here.